What's up, everyone? I am back for another episode of TMP, and today, I'm going to tell you in a second, I have a very special guest, Mr. Never H, Mike Titan O'Hearn in the studio. What's up, my brother? Ooh. I got to give you, first, I want to give you all the props in the world. People don't understand because, um, you know, People talk about age and numbers and bullshit, and, and, and I got to give you props for way, what a way to represent for us old folks, you know, letting people know that anything is possible, no matter how old you are or at what age or whatever, you are the perfect example of people don't get old if they don't want to. So I'm going to ask you one secret first. I mean, not a secret, one question. And, you know, a lot of people ask me, what is my secret for, you know, staying the way I am? And I think there's no secret to it. So... Mike, what is your secret? There's no secret. There's no secret, right? None. So what is your, what is your, uh, before I go back to, uh, Hold on. to well, your well, early well, life. Let me, let me say this. There is one secret. Consistency. Consistency, absolutely. Uh, so, so that annoying thing that nobody out here that wants to hear, the one thing that's left up to the individual, consistency. And I think, I think that's one thing that they don't, no, 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 I want to hear the trick. What mm -hmm. is the trick? It's got to be a pill. It's got to be You know something. what I tell people? You know what, what I tell go. people? If there was a secret, I would be a billionaire. Because I would let it out. I would let it out. I would sell it for a lot of money. So I know there's absolutely no secret. There's consistency. But now, Michael Hearn, 52 years old. You look like, you look like 25. And I'm not talking about the face. I'm talking about the body also. I mean, you know, you have this... Everything didn't age. And I pay very close attention to a lot of stuff you do, videos. Because, you know, when you get a little older, you know, you can still hide a lot of stuff. But you don't need to hide none of that. There's no sagging skin. There's no loose skin. It's all tight. And I have a, I have a very good idea why, you know, because there's a difference in, in, in doing it right and doing it the wrong way. But, but before we get to your way of staying in a healthy shape, I want to know, who was Michael Hearn? as a kid where did you grow up what was the sports you were doing before you started power building i call it power building because that's your own way of training um i started early i started at eight or nine years old family of ten. yeah oh wow yeah so uh the whole family grew up doing martial arts um wrestling football weightlifting bodybuilding and that's my sisters as well so mm. five boys five girls everybody did it i was the youngest which set me up to go, okay, what's working? What's not working from a young, young age? Mm -hmm. I could, and I grew up with dyslexia, which helped, which I thought is, was a curse. I didn't realize it was a gift. So you're the youngest of what, five, you said? Ten. 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 So you had to fight your way through all of them? I got my ass kicked mm -hmm. through all of them. And that's my sister's kicking my ass. <laughs> so that's when I really realized at eight years old, I'm like, I got to do more because I got drop kicked from my sister, my mm -hmm. older sister. And I'm like, Okay, I got I to lift harder, I got to train harder, I got to eat better. Whatever they're doing that isn't working, I got to stay with what's working and keep watching each elder like anybody. Anybody that has a sibling, you know you want to beat up your older brother at mm -hmm. some point and then go on to the next brother and then beat them all in sports, in, in I don't care if it's checkers or whatever it is, you want to compete. Right. And we grew up in a family of competitors. So you've been basically lifting weights since you before high school. 44 years. So, so when you got into high school, what, what, what did you look like? Before high school. I know, but when you, when you got into high school, were you already... I was a man. I was a man pre-puberty. Pre I won my first show at 14 years old at 176 pounds on stage, beating 19... Uh, there was 20 19-year-olds. Mm -hmm. And at 14, I beat them all as a teenage competitor. Two weeks later, I competed in a powerlifting meet and won that as well. And so I was like hooked, but I was hooked from eight. I started looking at Arnold Schwarzenegger and Bruce Lee were my idols, what they could do. And I wanted to be the mix of both. Did and you do any martial arts? The whole life. Also. I got inducted in the Hall of Fame of Martial Arts in 2014. Right. Now I remember, yes. So yes. My, my point was always to be first athletic, strong, and then look it. That was the goal from the start. It never changed. So, so you competed as a 14, how long did you compete? I competed until my late 20s. And then why did you stop? Uh, what was the reason for you reasons saying, I'm not competing anymore? Because the ultimate goal was to be like Arnold and Bruce Lee. Mm -hmm. And so that was theatrical. That was everything. That was business. That was all aspects of life. It wasn't one-dimensional. Mm -hmm. I was never a bodybuilder only. 
It wasn't a power lifter only. I wasn't martial arts only. I did everything. And so that competition, it was the competition of the whole aspect. And I kept going to myself too, because I was told, you know, uh, you're going to be in special ed your whole life. You're going to be, you can't read or write. You're an idiot. So I wanted to prove, and I kept that chip on my shoulder. I said, I'm going to be something nobody's ever seen before. Mm. And I want to be something so savagey that, that, that they're like, okay, that's freaky. And so by the time I was 20, and Joe Weider brings me down to L.A., and I fight 1,500 guys, 15, what is it, 15,000 guys over four days to get American Gladiators, I'm like, okay, this is the shit I want. You know, this so, is what I want. So, yeah, because there were... American Gladiators, there were two seasons. There was one back in the... There was two, um, I guess you would call them seasons. There was a, one back in the 80s the and 90s, ones. which I was on. Right. And then there was a TV show between that called Battle Dome, where like myself and Terry Crews was on, mm -hmm. and we broke people. And then there was a new American Gladiators after that, and I was on that again. Yeah, so basically these other guys from the first one, they were probably too old for the new one, and you're the only one that's still hanging in there. I don't know about too old, because I was old. But I was still been able I know, to but tussle. Not I was everybody to, looks like Michael Hearn. It was that's, that's what I'm saying. So that would be the difference. The difference was I trained differently mm -hmm. than, than everybody else. And I stayed with that annoying consistency that I knew I had to do because I couldn't do everything that everybody else was doing. So I had to do the one thing I knew I could control myself, mm -hmm. diet and train. So you should be strict basically all your life? Since eight. Since eight. So do you cheat at all? Not really. Never. So you don't have days where you're like, oh, fuck, I'm just going to eat whatever the fuck I want to eat now. But you don't even crave bad food. Uh, I, I never craved like a day where you go pizza in the morning mm. or afternoon and stuff. It's always a nutrition plan. And then yeah. if I'm higher calories, I'm higher calories. You know how that works. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, you're already s satisfied with higher calories. I'm getting steak. I'm getting my rice and potatoes. I'm happy. Mm. So I never really went away from that. And I never went away from lifting. So when you travel, you bring your own food? Back in the days of the uh, 80s when I was competing, it was tuna fish and baby food. <laughs> I mean, it was like, but it was like, I'm going to carry this 40-pound bag I'm glad you bring to the show them. and do that. But see, I, the kids out there aren't going to understand that, how hard it was in the 80s and 90s when mm. we were dieting and traveling and doing our stuff uh, and how easy it is now. There's no excuse now. Right. You can. I call up Icon. Hey, I'm going to Louisiana. I'm filming a movie. I want all my food there mm -hmm. day before I get there. Back then it wasn't it's possible. Done. You can't do that back yeah. then. Back then it was building character. So, so uh, movies. Talk about movies because you're obviously also always. I don't want to skip over one thing that you said that nobody ever talks about. What's that? Skin. Skin. You know why? Because everybody talks about. Uh, we know this. We, we see guys, and to give everybody an understanding, by the time I was 14, I competed at 176, but I was out 205 at 14. And by when I hit puberty... 205 at 14 years old? Puberty, a year later, I was 275. Get out of here. So 15 so you, so years old. So you've old. been really huge. I'm the same size I was when I was 15. How much do you weigh right now? 276. You weigh... Oh, God, but you're so tall. Damn, 276. So your weight's basically always the same. Since 15 years old. Yeah, and that's why you're changing. Your skin is not changing because you don't have those blow-ups. I didn't get... Then you lose it, you know? I didn't put on 50 pounds out of nowhere. Yeah. I went through puberty, made it through that with no stretch marks, good skin. And I remember, I was 275, but it wasn't a high school 275. Mm. I was state champion powerlifting. Uh, two-time All-State, one-time All-American football, so I was athletic. Mm -hmm. um, How tall are you? 6'3". Shit. So, end of puberty and that. And <laughs> a little bit taller than me. <laughs> An inch. I used An to be 6 foot, but the squatting just put me down to 5'8". <laughs> No, so, so the this, skin stayed the same, and then stayed the same, and the weight body weight. Stayed but you the same. know, but you know, even listen, yeah, we do everything. You do everything. No, no, right. go, go where you're going. I yeah, know where you're going. We do everything right, but you see, it's not that easy for a lot of people. You know, genetically, tell them why. Got to be, you got to have the genetics to even be able to do that. I mean, not everybody can say, okay, I'm just going to eat just like Michael Hearn. I'm going to train the same. I'm going to do the same, and I'm going to look the same. It's just not like that. So right. There's certain things you got to be able to find your formula. And once you have your formula, that's what you run with for the rest of your life. But if we've already, you, Gary, uh, Rich Gaspari, and I talked about lotion. You can, you can say Gary Stridham because he's, no, no, he's Gary one Stridham's of them. the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, um, but you talk about the stuff that we did when we were in our teens and 20s. 
if they listen to the details that are boring, they're all going to be better than us. Mm. Every single guy out there will be better than you ever were or I ever was. If they listen to what we did when we were in our 20s and we say what worked. So what do you, what do you tell someone who, who, who looks up to you and says, Mike, I want to be like you. What, what advice would you give him if you had to give him just one good advice? Nutrition. 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 I can change a body with nutrition alone without weightlifting. Mm. I can't change somebody, and we see it every day, that just works out and doesn't do nutrition. Right. Also, you, you're a lifetime natural. Mm. All right? I know that's what you claim. I believe you because I've worked with people natural. But does it bother you that people sometimes don't believe you? No, because remember, when, when I came, Weeder is the one that brought me down. So he saw me when I was first in the magazines at 17 years old and stuff. And then at 20, he brought me to California. And he said, cool, whatever you're doing, we're never going to talk about it. And so I never talked about it. Mm. That was nothing. I, and I know today is like a thing that people talk about it. I'm in, let's see, first magazine, 1987, 2000 and what are we at, 22? 21, you know 21. Many, you know how many articles I've talked about being natural? Mm. One. I have over 500. So you, never, so you never said that you're natural? I only competed natural. You don't go out and, I, or at least I don't go out afterwards and start claiming it and all that. Yeah. I just compete natural. Yeah. It's something I chose to do. Mm -hmm. I chose to do ADFPA, powerlifting, and I chose to do natural uh, competitions and bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. But I did both. But I always did both close together, so there was always the same thing for me. So, so what, does that mean you're natural or not? 100% natural. 100% natural. natural, but... but It wasn't about, again, what others did. It's about, I just wanted to compete. Right, right, right. I know, I, I just want to know if it bothers it. you. It doesn't bother me you anymore. Know, as a kid, it, it used did. to. It used to, yeah, as a kid. Because, because they would say, oh, you make money from it. Nobody makes money from being natural. Mm -hmm. Not one person in history. First of all, bodybuilders don't make money. Right, all right, let's, right. let's just say that right now. Mm -hmm. Now, if um, no vitamin companies worries about that stuff. So those things are all thrown out. It just bugged me that I put in the work and they felt that way. But I was a kid when that bugged mm. me. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm asking. So it's because, like, and now at this age, yeah. you want me to say I'm on drugs? Sure, that yeah, sounds yeah. great. Whatever, yeah. dudes. Go go, get on it and do what I did. Yeah, I'm the same way. I, and I'm, I obviously was on drugs when I was competing. But when I stopped, I stopped the drugs. There's no need for me to take anything, you know? And people just didn't believe that I was off. They're still, I'm, st I'm still blasting and I'm still doing this and doing that. I was like, you know, it that bothered me in the beginning because... I'm not, but the more you're trying to tell people you're not, the more they don't believe you. you and know? You, at some point, you just get so. I don't uh, care it's no like, more. It's, it's, yeah, I mean, I'm a 50 year old man. Yeah, I don't care what you see. I'll take it as a me. compliment now. If somebody thinks I'm on steroids, maybe, maybe I look better than I, than I should. I don't know. You know. I just worry about the young ones that think that they can still lift as heavy as I do, in the That's, mid 50s. But do you understand that some people just can't believe that this is naturally possible? Yeah, but then ask this. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables. F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. Do you get stronger on drugs? Um, I don't know. Do power lifters get stronger? I, I, I don't know. I was naturally also strong. I don't know if I was... I, I, would, I don't want to say it's The majority of, of people, do they get strong? I don't want to say it's because of the drugs. Okay. I say it's you get stronger because you have more muscle mass. You get more muscle, you get automatically get, right. should okay. be stronger. Okay. That's why I tell people, you know, I believe it. I said, why is he so strong? because he has the amount of muscle, and that's why he's strong. You don't get strong from steroids. I tell people steroids is a performance enhancer, okay? It might help you to recover faster, it might make you run faster, but if you don't put the time in, if you don't get the diet together, it's not gonna make you a professional, you know what I mean? So I, 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 I see it, I see it, I, I understand. You know, I think they don't see that. Some of them don't. When I was 15, don't. I was 275, today I'm 275. Yeah. At 15, 16 years old, I was already squatting over 600. And I still squat over that. I haven't met that many people for 35, that long, 37 years, that is consistently strong every single day, mm. every single workout yeah, for I mean, a that, lifetime that, and in that's, shape. That shows that, that, that you're doing something right. But are you, and it, 
Oh, and do you, do you think about backing off the weights a little bit? Do you, do you think no, because just a- I think the more studies that we've done and the more studies I understand, see, I believe that strength comes from connective tissue more than it does muscle for me. Connective tissue is that real strength. So it's like the wrestler, mm-hmm. the 180 pound wrestler you can throw around the 250 bodybuilder. That's that connective tissue relative to just muscle strength. Mm-hmm. And so connective tissue can get stronger and does get stronger with time. And so if the balance is connective tissue and bone density stronger than muscle, then you're healthy. Mm. And that's the one thing that I've noticed for me is like most of the guys in their 40s stop doing behind the neck press because of their shoulders or elbows. I still do skull crushes. I do behind the neck press. I still have fun doing everything that Mm. I used to do. And it's that range of motion. So the two things that I think that have actually held my body together and given me double the size of the density of the bone is the weights, because the weights adapt to the pressure you put under. You ever had an injury? Uh-uh. Never. Mm-mm. You never worry about it? I don't. Yeah. Maybe that's why you still train I don't worry train. about it because it, it, it's, I feel better every single time, and it's a continuous therapy. And but does that scare you right. sometimes? Not the weights don't. No? No, because, it, again, with the science, with Davis Law and Wolf's Law, both uh, support the belief that the body itself gets stronger. So body gets better because of pressure. Mm-hmm. Body gets weaker because no pressure. And so the one thing I'd actually be scared of is the days that I start backing off and the start days I start moving away from it. And the days that, that I that, you think that's when you're in danger? Stress. Yeah. For me. For me. Mm. So how many days do you train? Every day or? Five days. Five days a week? Five days a week. All right. Let me see what else I have from you that I will need to know. I love it. I love that somebody that's done this mm. at the pinnacle like you have. As you understand, well, you understand this. How hard is it to stay at the pinnacle for 20, 30 years? Not only that, how hard is it to stay looking like that for 40 something years? I know how hard that is. That's why I give you all the props in the world. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Even if it was with or without, it doesn't really matter. I think matter. that's another point. It's like with or without, cool deal. It doesn't deal. matter. Right. Uh, no, nobody can take Everybody away anything. Should- you then know. you would, at that point, say, hey, you know what, everybody, do them for 40 years. Yeah. How many bodybuilders have you ever met that outlift you? Bodybuilders, never. Did you? No, not one. Powerlifters, I remember by 19, I was taking second at the Nationals. And so at this age, I still lift with all the strongest men in the world, and mm. I beat them on some exercises. So it's not that, it's not that I'm in shape. It's not that I'm si- slightly strong or mm. the strong guy at the gym. I'm still training with not the guys that are strong, but the strongest guys in the entire right, world. Right, right, right. That I'm still hanging with. I'm still guest posing. And one I had the other day was the top five guys of guest posing around the world. So I'm still getting on stage and mm-hmm. showing the physique. So that's what I'm happy about. And so if people believe the, whatever they want to believe it, believe it. Yeah. But if they want to do something and listen to what you did and what were, what were our mistakes and what were our benefits. Mm. Did you ever make mistakes that you could say? Like, overtraining, 100%. Overtraining. What, what do you think, oh, in your case, what does overtraining mean? Well, remember, my first training partner, Gold Gym Venice, Tom Plaz. Mm. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, see, you understand that. I don't need to say anything else. Yeah, yeah. That's my first training partner. Now, I'm coming from a powerlifting gym, a grungy, underground powerlifting gym with national champions. And so I come to California, Gold's Venice, and I'm like walking in going, dude, I'm already the strongest guy here. Right. All right, now let's let's up my game. And I train with Tom Plaz, and we're doing 20s to 30s to 40 reps on squats and everything. And it's like, this is fun. And you couldn't pull me back. I was a pit bull yeah. with the leash off. So giving up was never an option? No. Whatever Tom get, I would have to try to beat. And that was the mentality. And so that would be the one thing I'd go, I, I want that fight. I want that fight in all of these kids that are coming up. I want that aggression where you go, okay, I'll go to that level. Mm. But then there's a time, because bodybuilding is such a different world. Mm-hmm. You, have to, you have to be smart. So how, did you, how did you feel you overtrained? What did you feel? What, 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 what told you as a listen? I need to back off the training a little bit. Because it, regardless of my strength being stronger than everybody, I wasn't nearly as muscular as everybody. Mm-hmm. That took years and years and years of yeah. time. Even though I was competing in my shows and winning and everything, it still wasn't nearly close to anybody else. Mm. So it was that whole muscle needs to be stimulated, not annihilated. Okay, so what do you do when you feel you're overtrained? You take take off? What was the longest you ever took off? I've taken one week off. A week? A week <laughs> off in 44 years. <laughs> 
I, I, I love this stuff. And, and somebody said something so to me. So you couldn't then. really, you can't even get sick. You train when you're sick, it doesn't matter. You can't stay away from the gym. Yeah, I'm, I'm that crazy about it. So are you? It's not even, it's, it's not the money. It's not the, and I say this to people, it says, uh, um, my best example was this. I walked into acting in class and the coach said, if you're here for money or fame, get the F out. Mm -hmm. And that is me when it comes to weightlifting. I don't do it for the competition to win. I don't do it. I, I love the battle. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I love. And I love lifting. Mm -hmm. And I love the voice in my head when I'm lifting. You know, the, the chip on the shoulder, the, the, the naysayers. I love that. So, and it's an so addictive thing, that pressure. I, I, so, I just love it. So let's say you, you're at home with the flu and you still go to the gym. Right? Uh, most likely, yeah. yeah. A week off. <laughs> a week off. That's crazy. That's, for me, unbelievable. I mean, I had times where I didn't train for three months, four months. That was even while I was active as a bodybuilder. I thought that was just, for me, it was just, I have no problem not going to the gym. You know, but I understand people like you because I know a couple of guys are the same way. They need to go be, travel somewhere. And, and we get there, 15 hour flight to Australia, and then we'll arrive, it's the middle of the night, people are tired. I need to find the gym, I need to find the gym, you know? They have to train, they just can't do it without. I would say that's the one thing that will keep me going, but it's the one thing that never allowed my body to get to the peak yeah. that it could have gone. So mm. for the guys out there, I'm not a badass for this, this is just something I love. If you were smart about this, you would take more times mm. off, you would definitely take a couple days off a week, and you'd back it down and then you would wrap it up harder for a show. Yeah. Another thing that we have in common, love for dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you more with dogs than with your wife. <laughs> but listen, no, you, you, I'm a dog lover, man. I see how you are with animals. You have, you probably, you only use the same, uh, what they call it, the huskies? Was it Siberian or Alaskan? Or uh, so, uh, the big one that was uh, that changed me was a uh, Nikita, um, and then uh, I've only had Huskies and, and Timberwolves. What yeah. was the name of I, I Elvis? Remember, no, I remember the name of your dog. I can't remember the now. one that's still with me. Striker. Striker is still with me. Striker is the one that was always traveling with you. Uh, and believe it or not, I've been doing this so long. Elvis was the one that was traveling before that. Okay, but I, I remember Striker. Striker, yeah, he everybody was, does. He would sit on the plane next to you. He would. I watched yeah. this. So well, I, I tell me about how, how many dogs you have right now? Three. Or oh, three. Two dogs and a, and a timber wolf. Why? Why? Okay. Why do you choose the the, the same breed? Why them? Because they're the closest thing to a wolf, and I'm uh, enamored by wolves. And, and the the way that they function as as a pack. You teach them everything yourself. I do. Yeah, I, I, I'm the same way, and I, and I believe we don't teach the dogs. I think the dogs teach us. I'm good with that. Yeah, I'm good with I that. I think the dogs literally teach us. Where I, I, in my my dog, my case, I mean, he needs to go to the bathroom. He let me know. He said, "I got to go." Basically, he's not saying it. Tell me, but, the, tell me this then. Yeah. Because you're a dog guy. What is it about dogs? What is the connection? Just the loyalty. The unconditional love doesn't matter if you're mad or not, he will be right there, you know. And that's I have dogs since I was since, since I can even think. My family always had dogs, so and it's just the loyalty. I mean, a dog will never leave you hanging, and if a dog won't come to you for whatever reason, it's mostly because he's sick or he's not doing too well. But other than that, he will drag his ass right next to you. I can go upstairs in my house and downstairs, and he will follow me all the time, you know. My wife wouldn't do that for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that, that's just it. I just like the mentality of a dog with a good character. You know, because people, you know, I mean, I have a pit bull. Which people, you know, people, yeah, pit bull. People, is a, it's, a, it's a puppy. It's a little, if, a, he, he thinks he's a poodle. He doesn't know he's a pit bull. He never bit anybody. He never barked at anyone. You know what I mean? So I, I just love dogs. But I, when I see you going anywhere to the gym, he will sit there and, and, and wait and, 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 this is not going to stop, is it? No, it's not going to. Never. So you, take, no. you still take I, the dogs everywhere you go? I haven't because we didn't travel last year. Mm -hmm. and, and everything that I'm traveling to this year is movies. So we haven't taken her to set. Mm. Um, but yeah, the, I, I'm with you 100%. The, the loyalty of uh, a dog is unreal. Um, and then there's something for me that happens when I uh, am stressed or, or happy and I come to that dog and that energy mm -hmm. and you can just sit in peace with them yeah. and, and they, they take you out of whatever it is for me, if I'm stressed out or whatever it is and I go and I, I play with striker and stuff, 
that stress is gone. You don't have any issues with the dogs being kind of jealous because somebody gets more attention or less? That's the good thing about huskies. They not. They 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 know their ranks. Okay. So oh okay. So stri- they know strikers. Strikers the one that comes and He's gets the, the bed. Yeah. And then oh, okay. yeah. So. So there's no problems at all. Mm-mm. Okay. Do you do you when you have more dogs? Is it is it like that you feel more towards this one than the other one? How do you how do you share or try to share mm-hmm. equal love to every every animal? Uh, I mean, you I, have help now with the wife and, right, and the son. Right. Um, which which she was not a dog person before me, which okay. is amazing. My wife wasn't either. And today, now today, changed person. Yep. Yeah, hundred percent changed. Yep. Um, yeah, I, my dogs are all different. Striker's been with me forever, so she's the one that kind of cuddles. And then I got two young ones that are. Uh, I got a timber wolf that's absolutely ballistic. Mm. So that's the one that's going to play. And then I got a, 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 a called a woolly husky. So this thick little uh, husky that's. Um, a funny personality. I don't know how to say that. Mona would have a better terminology for what Panda's like, but Panda is more like Mona's dog. Okay. So she's always around for the food. But yeah, it's the food, the training, it all keeps me so balanced. It's amazing. What keeps you motivated to keep doing what you're doing? <sighs> the motivation, uh, motivation comes and goes, but the passion, I, I swear, I, I, I'm a born gladiator. I love competition. And, and it can be on anything, but it's that uh, just the head-to-head competition of lifting against somebody or, or lifting against myself. Um, and now at this stage, now it's to do something that very few people have ever done, is to continue forward and be like Jack LaLanne, you know, mm-hmm. you know, 90, 100 years old and still having fun doing his thing. Honestly, it's to be able to lift my life away. I love mm-hmm. lifting. I know... Uh, tell a lot of people sometimes, you know, especially in, in our business or in, in yours, when it comes to, you know, TVs, movies, and there's a lot more stress involved. And I always, you know, Michael Hearn was always known as the single man. Now, all that has changed. There's a different Michael Hearn now. Michael Hearn is married. Look at has, you. Oh, You're going all the and, way there, huh? And, no. <laughs> and, and he has a son. It's your firstborn. It's also Mona's firstborn. What did that do to you? What changed in the way you think of certain things after you got married and you had the baby now? If they don't know Mona. I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, I was. I was always single. I was always having fun. Um, and then I met somebody that uh, it was an instant kind of thing that I knew I had to level up and become something different mm-hmm. and grow into a different person. They always talk about um, there's not... There's not, everybody's not a millionaire because of the person you have to become to become a millionaire. You know, you got to develop so much character and and, um, uh, consistency and and mannerisms and all these kind of things to become a millionaire. Um, And that being said, I was never ready to be a father. That's for sure. Okay. Um, Because bodybuilding is a pretty selfish thing. Very selfish. Yeah. And, And I never, even though I stopped competing, I never stopped living the lifestyle. And so when I met Mo, I, I, I realized I had to become a different person just to date that girl. And by changing into a different person than I was before, which is a good thing, mm-hmm. you should always try to grow. Yeah. You should always yeah. try to be better. And I shouldn't be this, you know, uh, a 40-year-old guy that's still acting like he's 20. I mean, that's just an idiot. Well, well the difference yeah. if you look like 20, <laughs> you get away with it. And I think that was some of the problems. <laughs> so, well, that's for a different show after 12 o'clock p.m. So you can check back in. Um, but with her, it was definitely, uh, I had to become something different. And it came at a right time because I just went through, like, a huge depression the mm-hmm. first time in my life. And I dropped. And I, and I hit ground zero. Um, and, and my uh, one friend was there for me and kind of helped pull me out there. Um, and we just lost him last year. It was his anniversary, big guy named Shad. But he and I were going through this hardship together. And uh, I met Mona, and then he met her. Well, he already knew her, and he says, you mess this up, I swear I'd kick your ass. Yeah, I told you. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is the one. And I realized it, too. I said, this, this would be a win. And as we were dating, uh, I didn't want to have kids because I come from 10. 
and I know what it's like to raise kids. And mm -hmm. coming from 10, I was very selfish because you don't get everything. You don't get the nurturing. You mm -hmm. don't get the catering. You get told, hey, you're eight years old, time to get a job, help out, get a paper route, start helping out. We got 10 brothers and sisters. You get in a fight, you go to jail. You mm -hmm. understand that? Grow up. And so I came from a different lifestyle in that sense to where I wanted to be nurtured and taken care of. But as we were dating, I realized something. I realized it wasn't enough for me just to love somebody and go, hey, let's have a family. I need to make sure that I love somebody that go, I could say, wow, you could raise this child with or without me. Mm -hmm. If something happens to me, you're good. Yeah. And I think at that point I realized I could actually have a child. And we got to talking and she goes, let's do it. And I'm a whole different person. I, yeah. That it changes the life, and I tell people all the time: once you have a kid, everything has a little bit more of a purpose. Whatever you do, because now you got not only a wife to take care of, you got dogs, you got a son that's going to look up to you who wants to be like daddy. Of course, you know how much passion and motivation yeah. does that give you? Yeah, because you and, and now you get me teen. Yeah, and coming from ten, being ten siblings, I mean. There had to be days where, you know, everybody's like, you know, why is he getting this and I'm not getting it? Because, you know, this, I, I don't think that your parents were so rich that they could afford nope. to give every single kid whatever they wanted. So you know exactly what it's like when you have to work and do something to make sure you get what you're trying to get. And uh, therefore, I believe that you guys probably go above and beyond to make it easy for a little Titan. <laughs> You know what I mean? And so he could, all he has to do is just fight the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Here's an interesting thing, because I, I think you can understand this being a parent um, and coming from and, and chasing a dream, because you're not normal in no way that are you normal mm -hmm. to the majority. You chased a dream. 1% of society chases dreams. So you automatically think different. And so do I. We think differently than the majority. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I'm sitting here looking at tight and going, all right, I'm going to try to give you every opportunity to be your own man and stuff. Um, and then Mona coming from a communist country, growing up on a dirt floor, no electricity, mm -hmm. you know, not until she got snuck here, you know, did she have electricity. So our upbringings were uh, created in becoming grown-ups fast. And so I think the one thing that I want to teach him is how to be old school, mature, and grow up to be a strong kid, but I, I want to be that dad that's still there tussling with him. How hard is it not to spoil the shit out of him? It's so tough. It really is, dude. <laughs> I mean, you, I know you know. She, mine's is 28. She's 28, and I'm, and I'm, it's still, ha it, has, it hasn't stopped. You know, you get to a point where it's like, you know, once you're 18, you're done. Nah. That's, it's so hard, and I know. I grew up with, with more. I know my dad was hard. And, and, and you're trying to be the exact opposite at the end, you know? I mean, you're trying to be tough, trying. I mean, I said no many times, but then she just get, ugh, got my ass right back. You know, there's nothing I can do. So, yeah, so you try not to be, you know, spoil them too much, but you just can't help it, especially if it's the only one. Are you, you know, guys getting another one? I'm, gonna, I'm calling you. I'm going to be just like speed. To, okay, he's doing this. Different. What do you think I do? But what you, should I do? But you got a boy, so it's a little, it's not, I think you're going to have it a little easier in certain things. I mean, having a girl, I think, is nice later because they, they, you know, they hang they, they on you still. She comes to the house, she's still on me. I'm watching TV, she's laying on me like she's my girlfriend. You know, with a boy, once they get older, once the testosterone kicks in, they're going. You know, so you don't have to worry too much. For me, I had to worry about, you know, boyfriends, girl guys and stuff. And I, you know, I was totally oh, crazy. Yeah. I put softwares on computers and fucking checked everything. I got <laughs> messages from everywhere. You know what I mean? Just because I wanted to know what's happening, you oh, know? I understand. So and sometimes there's things you see that you don't really want to see, you know, because they get to a certain age and once that kicks in, I remember the first time I came home and she was just about to leave. She was 14. She was leave the house. And I see makeup in the face. I was like, where are you going? She said, I'm going to see my friend. I said, come here, come here. So I went to the friend. She said, mm. <laughs> So now go. <laughs> I said, you ain't ready for no makeup. I said, I'm not ready for no makeup. You know, but so that's why it's a little easy. Are you guys going to get a girl? We're thinking. Yeah. We're thinking. We're thinking. Trust me, a girl will make it oh, totally complete. Oh, wow. I'll finally stop lifting. <laughs> I'll stop. I'll, oh, he said it. I, I stopped lifting I heavy. I, I'm having cheap meals now. A girl will make this whole thing complete. I promise you. I promise you. We've been talking seriously about that. And then that. she has an older brother, you know? And you're yeah. both in shape. Yeah. It's not like, you know, 
20 years ago, when people 40 or 50 or whatever, the doctor would tell you no. So you guys are both in shape. How it's long have like, you known Mona? I know Mona. How long do I know Mona? I would say since... Wait a minute. Let me go back to Flex. A while, right? Huh? A while. Yeah, I think I would say, yeah, yeah, yeah. She had the restaurant in New York. I know, uh, I would say since 2000 and I don't want to be off, but I would say, hold on, wait a minute. I was still with Flex Magazine. I was with them until 2015, 2012, 13. Is that possible? So yeah. about 10 years? She looked better now than then? She, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You guys are, she's she, fertile. She looks fertile. I mean, she you trains guys are, three days a week. So people talk about me going, hey, dude, hey, hey, you're, you're mid-50s. There's got to be something, right? Yeah. There's got to be something. She just had a baby two years ago. Yeah. She walks around I like just, that, full yeah. abs, I, mid-45. I'm it's telling like, you, wait I a just minute. saw her. I said I couldn't believe it, you know, especially after having a baby. So it's unbelievable. You guys are both in great shape, and therefore I'm... I'm putting a, 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 a thing out that said we all want to see Titan, a Titan girl. Little girl. So give us some names. Give us some names on oh. that one. <laughs> right? What would the little one be? Some, some European name would be nice. I thought London would be kind of cool. London? London. London is cool. London is cool. Who's the boss at the house? She is. She is? Oh, 100%. Absolutely. You, yeah, you, you yeah. like me. You give it up. There's no. no bullshit. I'm trying to be the boss when we go out, go somewhere. But as soon as we get home, <sighs> roles change, you know? I, I didn't even try. So I, kind of, I kind of saw how she is and how she, the kind of person she is. I was like, all right, you're, you're in charge. Is she, is she, uh, she, I don't know. I've never seen her angry, but she looks like she could get pissed. I've seen her moderately one time, one time. in seven years. Did it scare moderately, you? I don't want to see it full yeah. full throttle. I yeah. don't. It's, I, got, it's, that, it's, it's got that East European blood. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sure there's a knife under the pillow <laughs> and stuff. You make oh, me yeah, mad once, oh, rah dog your neck. Or maybe, yeah. or maybe a Kalashnikov somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's not. So who it, cooks at the house? Um, we're pretty lucky when we got Icon Meals taking care so of us, and then she does her moderate, but. Again, I'm, 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 here's something that was funny. She owned that restaurant mm -hmm. for over a decade, and so she loves high-end foods. And I said, but, but I'm a full-time bodybuilder. I love my chicken and rice. You know, I'm pretty basic. And uh, so she doesn't really get it cooked for me, but now that she's got Titan, she's pulling out all the little recipes, and, and we feed him like a beast. So she's doing a lot of chicken and steak and stuff. So it's great to see her cooking now. What are the plans for this, for this little guy? What are the plans? Can't coach size. Can't coach size. So the one thing we will do is, um, and, and we've already been doing it, the one thing that, and I was meeting with a pediatrician. I go, well, that, uh, the advice you're giving us isn't proper for babies. And this is the pediatrician. He goes, well, wait a minute. What are you saying? I'm saying, this is how you should feed a baby. He goes, well, yeah, but no parent's going to do that. And I said, we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll be the three hours every day, all the time, and continue to feed them like that and stuff. And so the ultimate goal right now is just to get him healthy and make sure that he continues to grow at his full rate um, and see what he can do. And force them into nothing because I know that uh, that's the one thing I think every parent has told me as soon as you try to force them into something mm. nothing and so we haven't forced them into anything 
Um, he loves the pool. He swims with a coach three times a week. He started wrestling. Um, he's two years old. And we have kettlebells spread out and a wrestling mat in the whole living room. Mm. So I'll wrestle with them and just mess with them. And he'll pick up kettlebells and run back and forth and, and put them up and stuff. So He's definitely got some of the greatest genetics on this planet from both sides. So I think I see something, something really, really good happening in the future. And uh, I believe, who knows? Uh, who knows? I don't know, he might get it, better than his dad. I, I think he'll be definitely better yeah. than me. I think he'll definitely so, be better than me. I want to run one more quick, I think quick by you, yeah. real quick, regarding movies. You're now filming the movies at, at the moment? Wow, we just finished up the third, fourth project in a row. And these last two projects, movies were incredible. Um, so the last two were the best because the one I just, the one before this is an anime, uh, The Seven Deadly Sins, where I play Escanor. And Escanor is a god, mm. a god of pride. And so the character is so badass and mean, um, but humble. Mm. <laughs> it's a, it was a great character. Um, we filmed that and we finished that up. We got a little bit more done. Then we got to go on our first great trip to Louisiana and film a book, uh, not a book, a movie called The Book of Cain. Mm -hmm. um, and where I got to play again a... Um, it's a great story, but it was one of God's creations. He tried to create a perfect human. The problem is you can't create a perfect human. Is that the human. one in the video you posted? Yeah. That last video yeah. where you punched that guy in the air? Smashed him. So do you... Do you oh, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. No, no. That was, that was uh, Escanor. That was uh, Seven oh, okay. Deadly Sins. I haven't put up anything from Book of Cain yet. Um, but this one was... We got to film in the bayou in the swamps down mm -hmm. there. And it was all night shoots. And it was freaking amazing to be out there in the swamps filming this movie um, and he's, it was great. It was do you, just great. Do you audition a lot or do you just, they, they just contact you and throw it at you um, because they know you're there? I'm lucky now. I'm you're lucky now that my name's been pushed around and you know, I've been, they had me for Superman. There was 10 of us uh, that were pulled in on Superman 10 years ago and that's when the name started getting around and then He-Man, my name's still in for that. Mm -hmm. and so. It's it's pretty lucky in that sense. You still got to read. You still got to go in there and get in yeah. front of the directors. Is it hard? No. No, I stay in classes. Yeah. We stay in classes. Um, these last characters were the hardest characters I had to do because I had to do this uh, this off Russian accent because he's oh. this, yeah, and it was like. So do you have to me memorize everything or you go by sentence by sentence or how does so that work? I always thought. Acting works as you understand the scene, you read your lines, but if you remember the, memorize the lines, you may mess up oh, because you so, just remember it. Okay. If you understand the scene fully and you know what's going on, everything flows because you know what you're going to say and what his response back and you're trying to work off an emotion mm -hmm. and it will just lead you into what you're going to say next. And so that's the great thing about acting is after you do it long enough that you kind of understand what the bit, you know, the back and forth is. And then it helps in every aspect mm. of it. And so we just keep pushing. And now we're working on the biggest project I've ever worked on. Barry Levine, who did Hercules with The Rock, mm -hmm. is working with us now to create um, for Netflix, uh, Hercules. So you ready for the big breakthrough? This is it. This one's, this is the big one. They, they, they pulled in the whole production. It's the same producers. Um, so this is the... Uh, this will be the go. Well, listen, man, I, I wish you all the best, and I hope I can see I see you breaking through on the I'm big gonna, screen. I'm going to bring you on the Hercules yeah. to fight you on there. Bring me the fight scene. Make sure to let me kick ass, though. Don't I let me will. get beat up. I, I always say, if, if they bring me, I'll be the one in the back. I'll just, yeah, beat somebody up. Brother, I appreciate you coming out, my man. Thanks for day. I wish you and the family all the best. And keep doing what you do. Keep inspiring the people like the way you are, and and it's unbelievable. And I I, I see it again, and I see it for, for many many years, and I'm looking forward to see much more of. You Michael. said something earlier. I'm going to backstep one second before you shut me down. You said, "Does it bug me when the, they ask about this and mm -hmm. that?" And I'm at that age; it doesn't matter. But you know what is cool? When you sit across from somebody that's done it, that's been there in the trenches with you, that's been at the pinnacle. And that person says something good about you. No, that, there's nothing. That's, there's, there's nothing, nothing else to say. So I appreciate you. I keep it real. Talking to me yeah. today. Thank that, you, man. That erases any kind of. I negativity. already know that you appreciate because you're here, and that means <laughs> that means something to me. Because not everybody, you know, there's people that just don't want to talk to everybody. But you coming here tells me you one of the good ones. Mm, I appreciate it, my yeah. brother. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you on the big screen. Thank you, kiddo. And I look forward to Mona being pregnant again. <laughs>
with a little girl. With a little girl. <laughs> All right. Thank uh, you so much, man. Love, kid. <laughs>